Well, good morning, friends. I got something going on here. You're gonna hear all about it. First thing we're gonna do, I've been making gallons and gallons of homemade Greek yogurt all every week for my kiddos and it hit me this morning. Oh, I have more than one Instant Pot. I could be having double the yogurt going on. So we're gonna get the second Instant Pot out. I have another liner somewhere. I also have my Go Wise, but I'll just, I'll, I'll upgrade to two Instant Pots going. Uh, they've been going through four gallons easy a week of Greek yogurt and some days we you know we're still out so what you got going on there Jay Morrell well let me say it is 7 11 in the morning we've officially rung the gong we are having a super mega extravaganza cookie day we are doing so many things will we do and <laughs> we're gonna do it with only our left eye <laughs> oh it's gonna be a good time it's gonna be a good time Yes. <laughs> I may sound like a lifelong smoker in this video, and I only have the use of my left eye today, but we're still gonna do it. We are determined mamas, and we are mega cooking and canning. Today is my day to do it. It ain't nothing gonna stop me. And the first life upgrade that we have this morning we are gonna be able to do two gallons of yogurt at a time. It's a long process uh, because it does the boiling process, it cools down. So many of you, so please do this, okay? So many of you have shared with me about how you then immerse your yogurt pot in like an ice bath to bring it down to temperature more quickly. And I absolutely love that. And I'm not able to add that step in right now. I think it's a fantastic idea though. I have just, I just set mine on a cutting board and check it with my digital thermometer and it all works out. Okay, this is my newer Instant Pot. I mean, it's it might be three years old now. I think this other one is probably seven or so years old. Um, no, it's probably not that old. I'm trying to think when I got it. My Go Wise is probably seven years old. My Instant Pot, maybe six. I was pregnant with Benjamin and he's six when we did the unboxing video. Help me keep my left timeline straight. So it could be seven, whatever. This one here, we had for a good seven years. This one I think I got three or four years ago because if you look over on largefamilytable.com, I have a lot of Instant Pot recipes. I've done a lot of things with these digital electric pressure cookers and such. And whenever I get into like recipe development, I've got several different recipes going on. I need more than one. And so that's just a perk of doing a lot of food things. Um, but anyway, okay, so I need to find another pot. Under. Ouch, ooh, that's thick. Excuse me. Oh, this area is the dishwasher. Okay. Well. Oh, there they are. Okay, Tower of Pots. I know I have other inner pots. Okay, there they are. <laughs> I've been, again, doing, just, I've kept this yogurt train pretty much rolling all week for weeks now, uh, most days. And so, and then I use one of those inner pots when I strain it and uh, all those fun things. So we will get another pot going. Yogurt. Boil, okay, I gotta run and put milk in here. So this is some of my collection of frozen, 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 okay, of frozen milk from my June Azure Standard Order and I've been defrosting these and then using them for our yogurt baking. And then our milk from Azure for July is what is not frozen that I we're using for drinking. We have not yet had to go to our local general store. They also sell A2 milk. I haven't had to go yet and um, buy milk there yet, but we probably will here in another week or so. I still need to call back that lady farmer that has the A2 A2 Jersey cows in my area. Just keep always shaking this out. Yes, there's a little bit of ice in here um, that has not affected the yogurt. At the end of the process, we have nice, thick, organic 
lovely, tons of health benefits. Not that I sound like I have any health benefits going on right now, but <clears throat> we have lots of good healthy Greek yogurt that I say my herd of children are eating by the gallon without the meat. And they're doing smoothies with it, and we're draining uh, the way off and using those in smoothies too. But again, thank you for dealing with me on this mega cookie day. I, I actually feel pretty good now. Uh, we've obviously, there, there's been a sick week this week. I started, I, I think I said July in one of my recent videos, but starting in June. And this is just my theory on this respiratory thing we've been going through. This is the second time I've had it. In June, we had a lot of the wildfire smoke here. And uh, my kids all got really sick with the respiratory thing. We had toxic air quality warnings, like stay in our house pools were closed, a lot of things were, we just were not supposed to go outside. Um, if you follow Jessica on Three Rivers Homestead, she shared a lot about them dealing with it in Ohio. So we had that in June, and we all got really sick with the thing. And then it was like we had so much rain that the air quality really improved for a few weeks, um, a week or two. I think it's been six to seven weeks that we've dealt with this cycle. And then all of a sudden, it was like back at it again. And so my kids had it in June. I had it in mid-June. So much so, I went on a trip. He asked, what do you, do you ever do any time by yourself, Jay Merle? I went on a trip mid-June with some of my good mama friends for like three or four days. But when I got back, I had to stay at a hotel by the airport because I was so sick. And uh, I had to stay there like two days before I could drive home. So anyway, last week, I had a family member that had strep throat. We did antibiotics, I mean, that was, you know, that adventure. And then this week, my two-year-old got real bad sick and his right eye also swelled up. Uh, and I've been under him all week because he's just been so pitiful. I mean, just so pitiful. Uh, and we've been doing all the things, doing all the things. Anyway, I of course shared what he had going on. I don't know if any of that gets back to the air quality issues that we've had. It is just something we've never dealt with before as far as not being able to go outside some days and such. I mean, we still have to go out though to do animals and things and there's not much we can do for them. Uh, but anyway, so all that to say, it's been a long week around here. <laughs> I tried to, I think my eyes actually water now. <laughs> I tried to, uh, tried to film yesterday and it just, we did not, I, I got some footage of like us harvesting in the garden, besides being under my toddler. I had two evenings where I went outside to fertilize my tomatoes. I used uh, MI Gardener's Trifecta organic fertilizer, and then he has another one called VegiGrow. And so I just, the VegiGrow bag was smaller, so I started that on one side and I used all of it till it was gone. And then I did everything else as much as I could with the Trifecta. I did that two evenings once. The toddler was settled enough and I could get outside, slip away and do that for a little bit. And then I tried to stay on top of my harvesting. Just, I mean, again, it could all stay there, but just a little bit in that when I did the tomatoes, I did my bead harvest because my golden wax beads and my uh, royal purple burgundy beads have been, you know, really, really popping. So I gathered those. Okay, I think we're about picked out for this evening. I went ahead and pulled two onions just for fun. But been gathering, grabbing the zucchini so they don't end up, you know, six foot long. Been getting those throughout the week here and there. And then last evening, I spent about an hour out there and did a ketchup harvest. And again, like I said, tried to film. I got the footage that you're seeing now. I was hoping to come in and get some baking done for another video and it just, it did, it did not, it did not happen and that's okay. Glad I checked the peppers. We have some of those to add to our collection this evening. So here's my little, my little Mega Mama load of zucchini that's been gathering. I did pick these this week, those two nights I went to fertilize the tomatoes and such. Um, these aren't all from this week, but we definitely, we're gonna start doing things with them tonight. And then there's how our nice little, got a shadow on, there you go, our little even, evening flower bouquet is working out. And one of these is a dahlia, and the other one is one of those <laughs> autumn sunflowers. But again, today, even though I'm just not gonna look great, right? 
uh, I'm gonna look like a 43 year old mom who's congested with a swollen eye, <laughs> okay? But physically, I'm almost back to 100%. I'll say I'm 75% or so compared to how the week has been. And Travis and I leave, you know, here while I'm in all my beauty, Travis and I leave tomorrow afternoon to go on a five or I think six day trip. We're, we're staying local, but it's our 25th anniversary this week. My mom is gonna be here with the kids. They're gonna have a wonderful time. Many of the kids did an equestrian day camp this past week where my mom also taught side saddle and they did everything from like English to bareback and it was just a wonderful, wonderful time. So that was great because those were the kids who were not sick and then the toddler and I <laughs> were home dealing with ourselves all week and he's a lot better now too. So I'm glad we're staying local because of course no one in my family has been ill with this round that my toddler and I've had this week. And so if Travis and I need to come home or if I need to run home for a little bit or if we need to order anything or get anything, uh, basically you just have to sit and rest through it and take your vitamins and drink your water and do warm compresses. And it's not like strep throat, you know, we've been in contact with our family doctor and everything. It's not like something that needs antibiotics, but uh, it does need monitoring. So that's been my week that's going on with what's going to be going on with my face because travis and i are going though for the week there's a lot of food prep i need to get done today that's why we're doing a mega cooking food preservation and candy day because if you saw in my recent no more grocery store grocery haul i bought all those peaches and all those cherries and we we're going to do all this food preservation and all of those things have been prepped and in the downstairs refrigerators. So a lot of that fruit, like it just has to be dealt with today or I'm gonna lose it. I have not been able to do any canning or preservation throughout this week. Couldn't even get stuff on the harvest right trays or anything because again, my number one priority has been my toddler. And then I'm, what me and what I'm dealing with is secondary to that. So today's the day. We're gonna start with big bulk buckwheat pancakes because I wanna get enough pancakes made, obviously for 11 folks for breakfast this morning, but it would be nice to have enough pancakes for the next, at least tomorrow morning, maybe even Monday morning for them. Uh, will I make enough to get any in the freezer? Who knows? In other recent videos, all the sourdough pancakes, they're gone. There was never any sourdough pan pancakes here. Okay, so we're gonna try to at least do a little breakfast prep with the buckwheat pancake. And I have a lot of other sourdough things we're doing. I'll go over the whole food list, but like I said, my eyes dripping, <laughs> things are happening. So let's get going with pancakes and then we'll look at, we'll go to the whiteboard for our big batch cooking and mega canning day. Alrighty, so I <laughs> pulled, pulled three quarters of my face together as far as it's gonna get today. And this is just what I do. This is my little eye care. I just do a little compressed on it. Wipe it from the old, old nursing days. Wipe it from the inner to the outer. Always go to a clean section of your washcloth. <laughs> okay, so we're doing it. Uh, how far have I gotten in the past hour? Well, I sat and talked to my mom all about equestrian camp for this past week for the kids and other kid adventure stories. So it's been a good morning so far. Haven't done any other cooking, that's cool. Because this milk had some ice in it, I have had it do its boil cycle a few times, and I've had to do that for some of my gallons of yogurt, depending on um, how defrosted the milk is. It all works out fine in the end. I do take my mixer at the end, my hand mixer. You'll probably see me doing that in this video or videos coming up. If I have, let's say, a gallon of yogurt the kids have already been eating, and then I'm going to add, because I don't want to have you know five different yogurt containers, I just have one big container, so if they have even two gallons they've been eating and who knows how much is left. I will add a new gallon to it and I take the mixer part on my immersion blender and I just mix, blend it all together. It all works out great. Now we are not flavoring the yogurt. We are just adding, like I have the organic cane sugar from Azure. We have those non-allergen chocolate chips. Um, I have a couple different organic little, little granola combinations here. Um, this one in particular is sprouted organic granola. It is gluten-free, nut-free, cocoa, cocoa crunch. I have a couple bags of this. I had ordered it for THM, a Trim Healthy Mama option for myself to put on my own Greek yogurt. And uh, I have a couple bags of it. 
still. And so the kids have really liked this this week. I got it on Amazon. And this might just be something I put on Amazon subscribe and save, depending on, you know, if the kids continue to like it. Um, and then I had this one. I only had a little bag of it. But I think I had got this at Costco. Uh, what does it say? I've got to focus with the one eye. Da -da -da -da. I don't know that this one was gluten free. Okay, yes, it is. Let me look at the front. Gluten free, grain free, GMO free, zero added sugar. So it has a chocolate flavor. So they've been adding these two in particular because hello chocolate and they're smart kids and then also uh maybe instead of the organic cane sugar they'll put um i have some monk fruit over here or honey that's the other thing i'm trying to get out of my head or they'll do honey so we have a couple different combinations how they doctor it up if we have strawberries you know some might do fresh strawberries but they also take the yogurt do smoothies take the way do smoothies lots of different combinations going on so again the next item on my list is the buckwheat pancakes i did get my sourdough starter fed because we're gonna definitely do some sourdough prep and many other things that i am going to get to share it with you but it is saturday morning here Kids really need breakfast <laughs> besides breakfast hopefully for the next morning or two tomorrow morning we have church and um so I'll be doing our breakfast for tomorrow, and then Monday morning will be the first morning they wake up and Travis and I are gone, and it'll just be nice for them to still have pancakes left for them. This is a different rag than what was on my eye. So it'll be nice for them to have pancakes left. And these have been washed. I just noticed a little, little bit of mess on here I want to get off. Um, I think because they were stacked. Who knows? Who knows the history? I'll rinse that one again in a minute. Okay, I actually think I need to wash all three of these. Maybe? Are you okay there? Okay, you just wipe you down. What I will do is turn them on and let them heat up a bit. I think everything's fine, but I'm, I'm only seeing it with one eye. So. so we'll at least do that. Now, before we get to the whiteboard, I can tell you one of the sourdough recipes that we're going to do is a sourdough zucchini bread. You'll see I probably have um, 15 to 20 nice zucchinis and a couple squash. So we're gonna make as much sourdough zucchini bread that we can and the recipe really reads that it's like a, a spicy, spicy almost dessert bread. So that'll be sweet, sweet for the kids. Um, if some of them hear zucchini, it'll freak them out. So I'm going to just call it a sweet bread and they're gonna eat it, it's gonna be delicious and later, later they'll know. Um, and then we're gonna grate up the zucchini that's left and get that pre-freezing to go in the harvest right because we'll be able to use that for later and that's just a quick way that I can preserve it before I'm gone for a week and when I get home I'm gonna have more which is wonderful come on zucchini keep doing your thing we're also going to do sourdough brownies because I've been telling my kids for a few weeks I was actually gonna do this for a birthday party a few weeks ago been telling them that I was going to do sourdough brownies. So we're gonna get those done. I'm gonna make them some for the weekend, and then I'm gonna make them some that I'll probably put in the freezer so that they'll have to be defrosted. Like they can enjoy them while their dad and I are gone. They can take them back out. Uh, we might get to do more sourdough chocolate chip cookies, which also I'd be making those to go in the freezer. They can pull them out, have to wait for them to defrost. And I've got a bunch of sourdough discard well, I can use discard in the sweet bread, in the zucchini bread recipe. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's written to either use discard or active starter, either way it goes. And she explains in the recipe, uh, it's because the rising agent is the baking soda and the baking powder. So it doesn't matter which one, but it's a good way to get your sourdough in there. And it does not have a long fermenting process or anything. So we'll just see for my gluten sensitive situations, how they handle that zucchini bread. And then the discard bagels, oh my. And my last super mega massive sourdough cooking video, you saw all I did, I think it was 32 sourdough discard bagels. My family tore through those with, within two days. They loved them. They're so excited I'm doing them again. So we're gonna try to just get as far ahead as possible on that. And we'll get all that done. And then I'll tell you the rest of my list. 
So now I've already added some of the ingredients for the homemade buckwheat pancakes using that buckwheat pancake mix that I got from my Azure order. And I'm adding the water that's needed. And you can see we have some beautiful flowers from the garden and our growing mountain of zucchini that we are going to get to tackling that zucchini coming up in this video today. So that's exciting. And so super exciting, I have launched my YouTuber Extraordinaire special course that's part of my Successful Business Mama course suite. YouTuber Extraordinaire is my very first course out of the gate with my heart to help mamas grow their dream online businesses as I've put a lot of hard work and elbow grease and effort into for the past 12 years. But I definitely have learned a lot. I've done a lot of trainings, I've been to a lot of conferences, I've experienced a lot, I've walked it out, and I always knew I would get to the point in my journey where I would be able to start mentoring and helping mamas create their dream online businesses. So this is it, friends, we're doing it. We have just a few days left of the special $30 discounted early bird pricing that's available for this very first time I'm taking students for YouTuber Extraordinaire. YouTuber Extraordinaire will never again be that price. And also as a special bonus that I'm only doing with this first round of students is I am offering six weeks of bonus live group coaching. It's going to be one day a week, a one hour live call for the six weeks of the course. And I'm going to live coach my students, answer their questions. I got one message on Instagram from a lady who had bought the course and she told me she's excited about the course, but being able to get live coaching with me is her number one reason she has joined. She is so excited about that added bonus. So far, we have over 130 signed up for YouTuber Extraordinaire. And as I've shared, the early bird discount is only for a few more days. That is something special we did during the first seven days of making YouTuber Extraordinaire open for taking in students. And that discount is going to end on July 31st. July 31st will be your last day to get in as a YouTuber Extraordinaire student for that early bird discount. So click the first link in the description below and head to largefamilytable.com forward slash YouTube and let me be your mega mama YouTuber Extraordinaire mentor and your mompreneur helper inspiring you and holding your hand and guiding you to help all your online hopes and dreams come true. And since my last uh, public pancake cooking in my last video where we fired up my four cast iron griddles, I've gotten some really good big batch pancake cooking tips and tricks with this cast iron and all this mega mama scale that I'm doing. Now, you know, for about the past seven or eight years, I have been doing my big batches of pancakes on my griddles, just on my countertop. And whenever we finished the Mega Mama Kitchen in uh, September 2022, I upgraded to two new griddles that looked like they were a little bigger. And I passed on those prior Old Faithful griddle, griddles to some mamas who needed some griddles. Well, sad to say, my new countertop griddles just really heat up my countertop. And I've tried, you've probably seen me in some other videos, I've tried to uh, put heat resistant things under them. And man, it just doesn't seem worth the risk. They're just... Uh, they bother me. <laughs> so anyway, I thought, well, I've got this nice stove. I'm going to work on doing my big pancake batches here on the stove. So one of the comments I have received is that these last couple batches of pancakes have looked so thin. And people have asked if that's because of the sourdough or whatnot. And really, it's just me getting my bearings, cooking these big batches on the cast iron on the stove and also working with the cast iron. I got a wonderful tip from a viewer. She said for me to take my coconut oil in like, you know, a little glass dish and then just use a brush, thank you, and brush it onto my griddles instead of doing big gobs of coconut oil. I appreciate that. My thinner sourdough pancakes can be overcome by adding a little more flour. These buckwheat pancakes are not much thicker, but I know in the past feedback I've got is that my pancakes look too thick <laughs> whenever I've cooked on the griddles. Doing, uh, you know, we've done two to three griddles at a time over the years and all my big batch cooking I've been doing here on YouTube. So we'll thicken it up. We'll work through the process. Really, it's just me getting used to handling 
doing all these pancakes on the cast iron on the stovetop, which I think we're gonna get a handle on. Hi, Thank you for hanging out here with here me again, and being on this journey. Also the getting a handle on this. You brought me in my cooking shoes. Especially when I have a long cooking day, and then I also wear my bags. These are uh, some Tima sandals, but I had another pair for probably five or six years. So this is my second pair, and they just, they are great for cooking in the kitchen, and needed to hold my body together. So yes, I just put the pancake in the glass plates there now perfect world you know maybe if I was just doing a dozen cute pancakes or something maybe I would set them out um, to cool somewhere else but this is how I do my mega mama batches I do have several kids that really really loved these pancakes I'm so glad because it and in anticipation of them loving this mix I also this was a five pound bag of the buckwheat mix that we were using in my very last Azure order I bought a 25 pound bag because I was hopeful that there would be enough interest in this five pound bag. You know, perfect world, I would have tested that first, but it just kept being one of those things on my big batch cooking list that I kept passing over to do other things. I am glad that lots of folks in my household, everybody enjoyed these, even Travis. Yay. He, he's not too hard to please with pancakes, but <laughs> I know it is, you know, buckwheat was a little different. I remember having them at my friend's house with her family growing up and yeah, they're delicious. And of course, like anything, add bacon to it, add eggs. Travis likes to do these basically pancake towers. Well, he'll do pancakes and he'll do a layer of eggs and a layer of bacon and like a pancake on top. And it's just this delicious delicious tower and several of our teen boys and even our adult sons will eat their pancakes like that too. So we, we have trained them in the way that they should go. And yes, my heat's a little, little too high there. Uh, again, I'm learning these griddles. I had the one, like I shared with you in the last video, I believe it's the one all the way down on the right that I had at my farmhouse for many years. And I cooked on, uh, don't do this, but I cooked on my glass top stove with it for many years. Uh, because that's what I had to work with. And then recently I've added in two more of those. They're $49 each. Um, and they're over on my Amazon list. And then I have the extra one I had got uh, bought with my Z-Line. But it did not seem worth the price to buy another of those particular uh, Z-Line specific ones. If you want to know more of that dissertation, you can watch my last video where I go through all those details. A really nice comment and suggestion that I have received a couple times lately is why don't I get a Blackstone and do my big batches on my Blackstone grill? And I have looked at Blackstone, I probably look at it two or three times a year, and I think through it, you know, Travis does have one grill he likes outside. I could potentially, but I'm really into workflows <laughs> and how I manage my space. And this is also the same reason why I haven't, I don't do canning outside. I mean, not saying, you know, never say never, not saying that I won't get a Blackstone, not saying I won't also end up doing canning outside. But for me to have to leave my kitchen to go outside and do cooking, I don't know, it just, it kind of boggles my mind a little bit and I'm, and, and that's okay. <laughs> um, I feel like I have to, you know, I'd have to take large batches of food outside. I always have 10 or 12 cats. I have kids, you know, a lot of times when I am doing these big, big cooking projects, like on this day, they're in and out, they're gonna eat here shortly, they're gonna eat breakfast. But uh, many times Travis and the kids are outside doing projects and playing and doing fun things with animals and such when I have my big batch filming days. And I feel like it will cause confusion if I'm then going in and out the back door cooking, I'm also concerned just for safety also. If I have a hot grill going and I'm going in and out of the kitchen, it's just one more place I'm going to have to have Travis watch. Like he already, him and the kids have routines and places where they play and, you know, rules and safety for our property and adding a hot piece of equipment outside that I just know I'm going to be doing the dance in and out the door, keeping the cats off of it, <laughs> keeping the temperature right, actually doing the cooking, going in and out of that door. And when kids see their mama, they also get to their mama, right? So that's my long dissertation, my large family mom edition on why I'm not doing a Blackstone grill, why it would be complicated for me in the way that I handle my kitchen and my life and my family dynamics. 
That's why I don't have a Blackstone grill yet. I, I could get one. I could order on Amazon. It could be here in a few days. Um, and we still might get one, like, for Travis when he grills. Well, I just took a little break. Travis and I just had our pancake breakfast. It was just delightful. <laughs> it was, they were so good. No issues. So I'm going to go ahead and make another batch. That bowl size of, uh, I think that bowl is... 16 to 20 quarts we got three quarters of the way anyway i did the recipe times eight that's on the back of the azure buckwheat pancake mix i'm going to do that again what i got is both of these full so this will definitely be breakfast tomorrow this one i can put a few more pancakes in and so then today tomorrow and then Monday's breakfast. And that means I might actually be able to then get a batch for the freezer, which would be amazing. Okay, I don't have to wash this bowl out because I've put the same stuff in it, so that's good. And uh, you saw I get a little drippy with my measuring cup here. That all worked out though. And this isn't usually the mixer that I use. And again, when I was cooking, I was thinking, this is kind of like cooking with one hand tied behind my back. So that's what it feels like cooking with one good eye today. I feel like, uh, yeah. Obviously, just one hand to hide behind my back. So if you had to cook all day, you know, like this, with just one good arm, that's what it, this feels like. But we could do it. So let's get our times eight batch of pancakes going again to get our Monday morning batch and our freezer batch. This is my counter wiping washcloth. I have another location I'm putting my compression washcloth, but I know they're the same pattern. So just want you to know I'm I keeping them separate. And this is just another another pick up the best wash cloth. Now also, getting back to the Blackstone Grill and why I don't work with it um, at this time. Now, of course, my friend Jessica over on Three Rivers Homestead and also Kate from Venison for Dinner, you know, they show often cooking for their large families on their Blackstone Grills. And I believe, well, I was going to say, I believe in both their situations, they have like a deck and patio right out their kitchen and I know Jessica in particular you know she has a workflow where in the summers I believe I'm sharing this correctly she just plans to do a good bit of her cooking almost on a daily basis outside on that grill I believe they do most of their dinners out there and they just have those routines and um systems in place and so those would be some good mamas to watch if you are interested in big batch cooking with a Blackstone grill. So this continues our Azure gallon of olive oil. I'm going to refill this. We got kids eating pancakes down this morning. I'm gonna refill this. And so this one I opened in June and it's towards the end of July. You know, we've been doing a lot of cooking. So just keep it up with how many gallons of olive oil we're going through. So anyway, we're, we're having Blackstone grill therapy in this video too, okay? So I just wanted to add in, as a mom, you know, we get our systems and our routines in place. If there's something that people are telling us we need to do or are encouraging us to do, or maybe we feel pressured to do, if you feel pressured as a mom, like I feel pressure as a mom, that does not mean that you have to do that thing. I know if I don't feel right about adding in the Blackstone and trying to do that workflow, if it makes me feel stressed out, it is okay for me to say, that is too much. I'm not going to add that in. I have a lot of systems and routines in place. I have a lot of things I do. And so if that one thing feels pressure on me, and I have, especially like when I worked as a nurse, I know what anxiety feels like, and I know what a potential panic attack feels like. And if there's something that is making me feel those feelings, I can make a choice to not do those things. A lot of the things that I do, a lot of the systems, even this, you know, this big batch cooking day, you know, a lot of people would not be interested in cooking for 12 hours. That would be too much pressure on them and would give them anxious feelings. And so my words to them are, they, they don't have to do that. They shouldn't do that. They should do my long time tried and to, true one for now, one for later method. I have several one for now, one for later meal guides and cooking packs over in my shop and they just talk mamas through you know making one nine by 13 pan for dinner one night and while they're at it they make a second one and they just put that second one in the freezer and by doing that following that cooking guide uh, in one week they could have five nights of dinners and five more dinners in the freezer wow look at that and it's very easy and gentle 
And I know that there's some mamas that, you know, making yogurt seems stressful. And if that is not something that a mama wants to do, she doesn't have to. We have so many options in this day and age. Just like with the sourdough, I've wanted to do sourdough for so long, but it has felt stressful and it has felt like it would be too much. And so I waited until I was in a season where the right now I'm in a season where for my family's health and a whole host of reasons, I felt like, okay, well, I mean, I'm not churning my own butter right now, right? I'm not making homemade noodles. There's a lot of things I'm not doing, but I can invest this time into having my sourdough summer and grow in those skills. And I feel okay. We're doing well. That. Don't think we're just flying around in here getting a ton of stuff done fast on this mega cooking day. It's gonna be a mega cooking slow day, is how this is gonna go. So it's 11 now. Kids love the pancakes, but most of them. Also, let me let me backtrack. I had one who truly was not interested. Fine. They made themselves something different. And then my gluten intolerant person uh, already had something else that they were eating, and that was fine. And so we're working around it. I had read with buckwheat and even the um, doing freshly milled grains that again, and this is not for celiac, but those with gluten intolerances, just like, um, let me apply my washcloth and think here, <laughs> just like folks with gluten intolerance can test and see if traditional sourdough will work well for them because of the longer fermented with the gluten. And many people with gluten intolerance can't do sourdough. Do your own research, go down the Google hole, but it's there and we've tried it and it's, it's been working very well for several, several weeks now. Um, I had read that some folks with gluten intolerance can handle um, or learn to handle freshly milled grains and even buckwheat and that's organic buckwheat there. So. I was leaving that as an option, and obviously we're gonna have enough of these here. They may test them and see how their body does, and that's just fine. So I have something that I need picked up in the city about 30 minutes away, and so Travis and the kids now are heading out the door to do that. We've got this other batch of pancake mix going here, and we're gonna cook up another batch. So I do have this little glass dish and I've even written on the lid yogurt starter and I just try to keep a couple spoonfuls from each batch in there and of course haha -ha, uh, in a recent video I don't think is it this one oh my goodness I can't keep can't keep all my big cooking days straight but you can tell by my voice mom has been dealing with dealing with some health stuff here recently um, I try to keep my yogurt starter back but recently I did have to send Travis to Walmart to get me some more yogurt starter. Uh, someone had a great idea about, I could actually freeze a little bit of the starter, so I would always have some, and that's a super idea also. I've, I've been doing pretty well as long as I keep my little container there <laughs> with the green lid um, with some yogurt ready to go. But it is so nice to have unlocked this new level of having two gallons of yogurt going at one time. I'm excited about that. 
like I say, there's been many years I've had two or even three electric pressure cookers going at one time, especially on massive freezer meal cooking days, uh, but also with recipe testing and other big food stuff mama's got going on. So I was glad that it just came up in my mind that morning, oh wait, I could at least be doubling my yogurt production and that would be super for my family because they really do uh, use that yogurt in so many ways. So now I'm taking a few minutes here to get a bowl, soak it in the water, and I'm working through my different 10 by 15 pans there for my pancakes. We are going to get those in the refrigerator and move on to other cooking projects. So yay, we're getting them in the refrigerator now. I do have a new weekly meal plan. It's a, a magnetic, like, let's see. In my sickness, can I think of any words? <laughs> laminated, a magnetic laminated sheet. And what I've been doing for the past couple weeks is writing out a meal plan for the week. Now, you know, and I've shared this, I think one of my first videos nine years ago was about meal planning for my large family once a month and how that was back when I truly did once a month grocery shopping and had my systems in place for that. And so these days I really, you know, kids are older, we have more children, um, super mega full-time business, whole lot going on. So what I like to do is I look at our week and I decide based on what's in the freezers, what we need to use from the garden, um, appointments, activities, those kind of things. And usually I just write, I squeeze our meal plan onto our 30 day calendar on the other side of the refrigerator. And you know, our meal plans are so deep and wide and they're extensive and <laughs> they're also in my head. And so I thought, okay, I need this upgraded life. I'm going to get us a one week meal planner for the refrigerator. I can write out the plans, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for every day. And also since we've changed our snacks, you know, instead of having convenient snacks, oh yes, plus fruits and vegetables and like store-bought yogurt and stuff, since it's more homemade items now and I need my kids to know, you know, what they have to work with, what needs used up, those kind of things. It gives me a place to write the snacks on the side also. So I can say things like, you know, I can write that there's yogurt available. Um, I could say that there's cucumber slices and carrot sticks available. Um, I just insert here, you know, like zucchini muffins. I can write those kind of things down. And that way when they go to the refrigerator, they have a list of current snacks. And I could also write on there a list because it gives three different areas. Uh, and it's not, you know, it's not an unheard of one week meal planner. If you go onto Amazon and search one week meal planners, there's several of them. And actually they were so affordable. I ordered two or three. So I, I like to see things and look at them. And I know I have mama friends. I can always pass a brand new meal planner onto. And so I wanted to look at them and kind of pick the one that felt right to me. And so that's what I've been doing. So that's a new addition to the refrigerator. And even like with Travis and I getting ready to go out of town for uh, that coming week, I knew that if I had all the options listed for my kids, even if, you know, they changed it or tweaked it or made other decisions. I know from the future, one night, uh, my mom ordered pizza for everybody. Uh, that's totally fine, but they at least know at a glance what the choices are and what's there for them. It also helps them not forget about things. Not that they would forget about, you know, five dozen delicious zucchini muffins, but uh, they have, they just have an at a glance list ready to go. And I know that here, me washing my cast iron with um, hot water and some soap is controversial. I'm going to get into the details on why I do this with my cast iron coming up in this video. Hold on, my new chicken coop is here that I got off Facebook Marketplace. So let me show you how Travis is handling this. Woo, sorry, that just blew up that lighting, huh? Let me show you how Travis is handling this. There he goes. So it was $300, marked down to $250. Then he charged me $50 for delivery. We're seeing if Travis can move it. Trying. Obviously, it's gonna need some adjustment. It needs like a little door made for the side and it needs a ramp. But he's working with it, he's manhandling it. So this is another coop for my laying hens, not for my meat birds that are over yonder here. They're, they're not gonna be here too much longer. Um, well, these will be processed in August at some point, probably just with how our schedule's going. 
this is going to go down in our barnyard and I want to find probably one or two more but that was a great deal I just, I'll just cover it up there is no problem here there's no problem there's no problem um, if you go to buy a chicken coop they are you know you have one made and stuff which I had I had a beautiful dream one made at the farmhouse and it sold with the forest house and those videos are on here oh here it comes hold on look at this there you go it's coming towards us you can see the nesting boxes on one side but anyway it's good for the cow oh now we're in the noisy now we're in the noisy fan tunnel um, good for the cow to get used to equipment noises and stuff too because it startled her the first couple times but he's getting ready to drive by her with that big old chicken coop on the front of his machine there and uh, she's just chewing her grass there no problem whatsoever and actually Travis moved her he was telling me this morning he moved her from from one tree where he thought she would like what was growing there and she didn't to another tree I was like oh you're getting to know your cow but there he goes he's a rolling I was looking on Facebook Marketplace. Facebook knows that I like to look at chicken coops. We have these quick coops that we built in 2020 because we had just moved and you know you couldn't get nothing from nowhere. So we bought two sheds. Travis bent the pipe. I almost said did the electrical, did the the running yard that has the netting on the top. So they have their coop, shed, they have their running yard that's safe from predators and then they can go out their door and we can let them into the one acre barnyard every day. That's been fine except for this year, fourth season here with those sheds, now predators have decided to start digging and tunneling up under the sheds. They don't have a floor and I know it's not, it was just supposed to be a 2020 quick thing, but it's worked these last couple years, we've had no issues. So we're using those buildings now just as an option for other animals or hay storage or those sort of things. And I temporarily have my laying hens and my good rooster and, and some pullets that should start laying anytime now, it's supposed to be by the end of July. I have them in one of my new chicken tractors that I bought that we should also get five or so years out of, Travis said. I have them in those. In the other chicken tractor, I have young turkeys and ducks and guinea hens and such. And then in our trampoline tractor, I have the meat birds that we will be processing in August now. And then in my brooding house, I have the next load of meat birds. They're very young though, they can't be out on grass that in a few weeks. So you see how we see that's how farm life goes. So we'll be able to move our laying hens to this new coop and let them free range in the barnyard. And they're fine out in the barnyard because I have great Pyrenees loose in there and they take care of any predators. Don't have a great Pyrenees actually sleeping inside the coop that they were that they've been in. So this new coop, they'll go up the ramp inside and it's got a bottom that's a couple feet off the ground and then it has the nesting boxes it'll be just fine i'm gonna keep my eye my one good eye I'm gonna keep my one good eye out for another one hopefully i get the same deal um i talked to a local coop builder that could build one for me i i might end up just depending on how this coop works out and if i'm able to find another one just having him make me some because that's a local small business that my coop order could then support but and we also just ordered a brand new 10 by 16 run-in building so working on working on our buildings we have three other buildings already and multiple fenced areas and stuff and pig houses and lots of options and like you know on any homestead you just keep progressing and tweaking and refining and doing the next thing like someone says there was some meme somewhere about if you want to start Oh, I don't think I'll be able to quote it, but something like, you'll love homesteading if you love having 28 undone projects, or something like that. So I know this is the non-exciting stuff, but I'm taking care of myself. I'm having my, my wasa crackers, my light laughing cow cheese, and then this Nancy's probiotic cottage cheese I like to eat on top of this. And my super duper 10 year old is unloading both dishwashers for me. And they get the dishes worked around. We need to do some easy wins, right? That's all we got going on today. So we got four batches of pancakes. I'm good. We got four 10 by 15 containers. That's what I'm doing as a batch. With our recipe um, on the Azure bag, I did two batches of 18 cups each. Plus added, it was eight eggs, eight cups of water, eight tablespoons of oil. I feel like something else, but I can't think what it was right now. So four big 
10 by 15 glass containers. That is good. And then I was going through planning. Of course, now I'm not eating while I'm talking, but going through planning the best course of action for other things I want to do. Um, oh, oh, oh. Well, good thing I have paper towels here. <laughs> um, I should get the dough ready for the discard bagels because I believe once I get each batch ready and we'll do super mega ton batches. Once I get each batch ready, I believe if I remember correctly, it needs to sit on the counter. It needs to sit for about 30 minutes and then we do the bagels and then they sit for like another 30 minutes or so. So we'll at least get the first 30 minutes, get it made up the first 30 minutes started. I might be able to during that time I might have another helper available here that could get gravy in the zucchini. And so while we're waiting for this dough to rise for the first 30 minutes, we can then start making the sweet, the sweet bread. And then um, we can also get the what's left of the zucchini then on trays to freeze for the freeze dryer. By the time we're working in that, we're dealing with bagels. And then we'll circle back around by the end here and get those sourdough brownies done. And I think that's about all that we'll be able to get done for this time. But but stick with me. Maybe we'll get none of that done. Maybe I'll just sit here and eat for the next few hours. But that, that's my, my plan on how we're going to handle it going forward. And so I know this is this is a precious little setup for grading the zucchini, but I will say I harvested this Italian striped zucchini at the right time. It did not get too big. It wasn't hard. It wasn't seedy. And so even though I'm hand grading this, um, it works just fine. It only takes a couple minutes to zip through. And this is just, you know, a lot of times when I have these big cooking days, I go by what I feel like the next thing I could possibly do. And at this moment, I was like, okay, I think I can just tackle that zucchini, so let's do this. I do have another teenager who's going to come in shortly and work on grading the rest of the zucchini in the basket. And we're going to get those on the Harvest Right trays and in the freezer so that we can then run those through the Harvest Right and have freeze-dried zucchini ready to go for other cooking adventures. It's a way that we can preserve it for the future. I have also seen where folks will freeze their zucchini in the little muffin cups. Lots of good options there. And I do plan and hope to have many more zucchini so we can preserve it in a variety of ways. On this day, my goal was to make a Super Mega Mama big batch of the various zucchini breads and then um, get some frozen for the harvest right. And I know we'll have other adventures coming up where we can preserve it in some other ways. I just felt like doing the zucchini, okay? That was not starting getting the, that bagel bread going, but that'll be next. And you can take a little eye soap break. And I at least did five zucchini. I'm, I'm eyeballing it with my good eye. I think that should be enough for the sweet bread aka zucchini bread that I'm going to do and um, the rest of it like I said I've got got some people having a nice time in the sunshine but I'll see if one of my teens can sit in here pretty soon and get the rest of that zucchini shredded for me and get on the harvest red trays and then we'll just get that in the freezer and then tomorrow we'll um, get that going in the freeze dryer because when you freeze it it, it helps cut down the time it's got to be in the harvest right okay Yes, so we're doing things. The other song of our people. So, things are progressing. Travis did lunch with the kids outside. Things are going well getting going on these bagels. I did have uh, a team come in here and get the rest of the zucchini grated. So my plan is with these bagels, last time we were in the kitchen together and we did these bagels, we did, it was a times three batch. It technically should have been 36 bagels, but you know me, some, some bagels were mega mama size. Some were a little bigger than others. So we ended up with 32. 
And again, my family's like already gone. So I'm thinking this time, let's do a times six batch since we obviously can multiply the batches. And then if I left my family out, I'm thinking through life here. We have pancakes for tomorrow. I'll encourage, obviously pancakes is what the breakfast is. We have a lunch plan and then Travis and I are leaving on our trip. So I'm thinking I would leave them out. Sorry, kids run and having fun, but sometimes the, the running's like, what's, oh, and, and we're down one eye, we're down one eye. Um, so I'm thinking I would leave them out two dozen in this refrigerator, and then that should give us four dozen to freeze. They're gonna be stocked up plenty in this refrigerator to start the week in the first couple days with the things that we're doing. They will be operating out of freezer meals, but as far as, you know, other items, we're gonna freeze a bunch of those pancakes too. But right now I'm just working on getting things cooked up and then we'll get things bagged up and in the freezer. So I got our little bowl set. And some people have asked me about using sourdough on metal and they heard you shouldn't or couldn't. I've kind of read a, a variety of things online. Now the ice is gonna drop to be part of the conversation. I've read a variety of things. I know folks who use metal. I've been using metal. I guess are we over a month now? I just use what I have. Sometimes all I have is metal bowls. My other bowls are in, in wash or in transit here somewhere. So I just haven't had any issues with it. Um, I guess at some point during the fermentation process, maybe some folks might have an issue. We would mix it in a metal bowl. Um, it's not staying in there though for hours and hours. But I just, you've seen the sourdough that's been coming up and coming out of this kitchen. And it's all been Lisa from Farmhouse on Boone. It's been all of her recipes, which I will link in this description, everything that we make. And uh, this hadn't been an issue, so I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna use what I have kind of mama. Okay, so now, I probably put way too much oil in that, kind of splatted. Uh, this just needs to sit. It's actually for 60 to 90 minutes. I was wrong when I said 30 minutes. 60 to 90 minutes. I'm not gonna start my timer on that until I get each of the six rolls, loaves, whatever, batches ready. Then we'll start a timer for probably 60 minutes at that point because we gotta keep this trainer rolling. So now the yeast in the water, because we do need to add this because it's a sourdough discard recipe, we are gonna let that sit for a couple minutes and then we add all the other ingredients here, except I am out of honey. I have set, set up a, a flare that I need. Mama needs a couple jars of honey up here and we still have honey in our grocery store in our basement stock up that I'm still working through. So anyway, they'll bring me up some more honey. Everything else is out. Yeah. And while we're waiting on that, I'm just gonna go through finish these dishes. I know my dishes are fun, but again, even with using paper plates, dishes for 11 and Mega Mama cooking make for lots and lots of dishes. But as of this moment, the dishwashers are unloaded and I might have time at some point as we continue our cooking to load them. Or I will have somebody who looks like me come in here at some point and load them. And that's all good. I'll get questions or I have unanswered questions as far as how you all see me handle cast iron and you washing my cast iron and all of that. I know there's a lot of thought 
on cast iron care. Uh, whenever I get asked about this, and if it's someplace that I'm able to share a link, I try to share, Lodge Cast Iron has a great article, and it's about um, the 10 myths, I believe it's 10, nine or 10 myths of cast iron. And they say the myth, and then they, sh they share, because if anyone's experts on cast iron, it's gonna be Lodge, right? They share how they feel about it, basically. Some of the questions in there are the same questions that I get, so I'll link it for you in the description. But in there, one of the, the myths that they state is that people say you cannot wash cast iron and you definitely cannot wash cast iron with soap. And they said that that is false, that you can wash your cast iron with water, with a dish soap, like Dawn dish soap, whatever dish soap you have. You can dry it and then you can coat it in a little oil. And that's what I've been doing. I have not been cooking with cast iron 20 years quite yet, but we're getting close. <laughs> and I've always just washed it, dried it, oiled it, it's fine. I asked my mother-in-law, she's cooked with cast iron probably 50, 60 years. That's how she does hers too. I haven't had any issues with it. Now my friend Katie over on uh, castironrecipes.com, she's got, she was a Ninja Mom expert over in the large family table community. So Katie is also an expert on cast iron and she did a nice cast iron care um, live call with us that was helpful. And then another question I get because I have this video where I cook like four dozen eggs and wherever I share that video it goes viral for me. You know TikTok, Instagram or even here even on YouTube shorts. So then I get to hear a whole bunch of people's opinions about my cooking with cast iron and I use my metal spatula. But also on that Lodge cast iron article about the myths, I can talk and get my ingredients right. Yes, I can. Cheer me on. We just did our two eyeballed, one eyeball uh, tablespoons of honey. We'll do our two teaspoons of salt. See, I'm mes mem mesmerized. Yeah, mesmerized and memorizing Lisa's recipes now. And then it's a cup of sourdough discard. So the other question is that you can't use metal on cast iron. And so that Lodge article also states that actually yes you can. That cast iron is so tried and true and long standing that you can use metal, you can use rubber, you can use silicone, you can use pretty much anything you want. Read the article first before you do literally anything you want. But that you can't hurt it. It takes a lot to hurt cast iron, and Lodge says you can use metal and you're not gonna hurt it. So ask them, except for these uh, few little fancy French pieces that I've bought here in the last year or so, just make my mama heart happy. All of my cast iron is Lodge, and I, and my oldest pieces, as we say, not quite 20 years, but they're they're getting up there because one of my first pans that I used forever that we replaced at the forest house. Now I gotta keep working, heck. And then it's four, um, four cups of unbleached flour. One of my first pans had nonstick coating on it. <laughs> and we used that thing for a long time and until the nonstick coating was off and that's before I knew about nonstick coating. So God bless it. Maybe that's why my eyes swollen now in 2023. I could know it, but you know, I, I shared about my eye in real time on Instagram today and I'm having people message me from all over the country saying they are having the same symptoms and their same right eye swelling shut. I don't know. I don't know. What, what are they going to do to us now, huh? <laughs> so, anywho, it's just interesting. Okay, I think I got everything. Salt, water, honey, chatted too much, discard, flour. That's it. Again, it's not complicated. It makes for a little messy countertop area, but that's okay because we're getting things done. And these make my family so happy. And I was talking to my friend Sarah from Our Tribe of Many, and she heard her. We're just in step and step. We're not coordinating what we're making, but it's fun because we are both, we're just ripping through Lisa's recipes because both of our families are loving all of this sourdough are loving getting our family all the sourdough we can. So she shared with me yesterday and the day before that she had also made her family the triple batch of the discard bagels and they were also gone within 48 hours. 
So, I'm just telling you, you need to try the discard bagels. Also, so we're on our third batch now. Thank you so much for all of you that have joined my Successful Business Mama YouTuber Extraordinaire course that is out now for a limited time. We actually have just a few more days left for you to get the whole course, which also includes, yes, I can keep talking, which also includes six special weekly live coaching calls, group coaching calls with me. That's where I'm gonna spill the beans and answer questions and help folks with their channels or help folks, woo, help them with their ideas, get everything going. There's so much for every mama that wants to get going on YouTube and get their channels going over in my YouTuber Extraordinaire course. Now, the real fun thing, timing like this, I tell you, it just all works out. The course is, of course, on sale. Of course, of course, the course is on sale now, currently, for the first time. And this week, it has been at its lowest price ever. Since this is a brand new course, it is on sale this week for the lowest price it will ever be. It'll never be this price again. And that price expires on July 31st. If you click the first link in the description below, you'll have all the details. But since I have grown an online business and I've been making a more than full-time income while also being home with my family and homeschooling my children and doing my mega mama things, I have a whole lot that I wanna share. And so for my very first course in my successful Business Mama Suite, we are doing all things YouTuber extraordinaire. So the cart for the course is open now. So that means that mamas can continue to join for me to be their Mega Mama YouTube mentor. And then on August 8th, which yay, my 44th birthday, doing things. Hopefully my eye will show up to the party, right? My 44th birthday, we launched the very first week, the very first module. YouTuber extraordinaire in the Successful Business Mama Suite is a six week course. And each week, as I said, there is a special bonus live call with yours truly that's gonna last an hour. It's gonna be a whole lot of fun. Plus every week, there's brand new YouTube Business Mama videos that are launched. There are exclusive worksheets and of course, so mega much more. So if you are interested in being a successful YouTube mama click the first link in the description below right now while the course is super discounted for a few more days can I hold the camera and pick up my dough I think I can yes did it nice we will take this over here to join its friends it's number three in the line also there's our big batch of zucchini that we need to get on harvest right trays. There's my little batch of zucchini. So we're gonna deal with that here too. All right, so we've got four trays ready for the freeze dryer. Well, ready for the freezer. I'm gonna pre-freeze it first. Okay, so it looks like we are getting in six pans freezer that will be going in the freeze dryer. Okay, so we got our six batches of bagels going on the island. I feel like I'm fading, but we'll be okay. I've got the timer now set for 60 minutes. It's supposed to rise for 60 to 90 minutes, and most of these have already been here uh, 10 or 15 minutes at least already. So I'm just gonna sit down, take a little break, drink another quart of water. I got a video getting ready to come out that I've gotta start watching through the edits for. Just got some things to do, so I'm gonna sit here and put my feet up a little bit. Again, not fun to watch, but that's what's gonna happen this next little bit. So here I am dividing out the cups of shredded zucchini. We times seven this recipe, so I needed seven cups, or was it 14 cups? I'm gonna tell us coming up. I needed to do my zucchini math. Now, I wanna tell you a cute story, though, from the future that's even cuter than all these cups of zucchini is that my eight-year-old, who is one of my big Mega Mama food critics, he will let Mama know, okay, okay. Well, the next morning, he got in the refrigerator and he grabbed one of these muffins. I did not even have time to call these, like, I don't know, what was I going to call them? Sweet, sweetie muffins or whatever, whatever my cute little sugar and 
uh, and Spice name was. I did end up making an executive mama decision. I, I did add two handfuls of chocolate chips to this times seven batch. So it was not a lot of chocolate chips, but I thought just enough to get them through because I knew the bread was gonna bake up light. Um, the size of the zucchini was probably going to be seen, and so that's why I added the chocolate chips in. Well, the next morning, he grabs one before I could even say anything, because I was obviously having a struggle, and he goes, huh, looks like there's vegetables in these. He took a bite, big bite. He said, oh, they're kale muffins. These are good. <laughs> and of course, he goes on to eat several muffins. I just thought it was funny. I've never made kale muffins. He saw the green. He thought of kale. He announced it. He ate it. There are no life problems. I did not have to call these, you know, sweet chocolate chip muffins or anything okay, like that. So They're kale muffins. The okay. bagels technically hit an hour, and like the directions had said, 60 minutes to an hour. We're going to get going with this zucchini sourdough bread now. This is also a recipe from Lisa's. Now over on my blog, largefantable.com, I do have a zucchini bread recipe and various zucchini muffins, but they're not also sourdough. But we'll get there. We're gonna convert those this fall. That'll be a lot of fun. So I'm doing everything sourdough, Lisa, Lisa, Lisa. And in her sourdough recipe, it's precious, but she makes recipes that are compatible for everybody on the internet. So I'm telling you, head over. Her sourdough zucchini bread recipe is for one precious nine by five pan, which is sensible. This is what everybody in the world needs. That's why Lisa's Lisa. I need this like times 10. <laughs> and that's why Jay Rell's Jay Rell. So anywho, all that to say is I'm going, I had to figure out how much shredded zucchini I have. And so, cause I didn't know if I was gonna do times four, times six, or even times eight. I like even numbers. I technically, let's see here. Do I have seven cups? No, I think I only have eight. Okay, hold on. We got four. I know what I was thinking math-wise. Each loaf takes two cups of the zucchini. There you go, that's what I was thinking. So this technically is enough zucchini to do seven loaves, but she also has the directions on there to do it in muffins as well. So I figure we'll do our cute little uh, two loaf pans. And I also have this precious little mini loaf pan. Um, but I have my silicone muffins also. So we'll do a couple little pans and we'll do a whole lot, a lot of muffins. Now with her recipe, you can use half a cup of starter or half a cup of discard. Down here she says sourdough discard or active starter can be used for this recipe. The rise doesn't come from the starter, but rather chemical leaveners, baking soda and baking powder. So since I'm stocked up on discard, I'm going to use discard in this recipe. One of the things that Lisa has taught me for most traditional sourdough recipes, not this one in particular, but in many other recipes to think of my, sour, my active sourdough starter as the yeast. So that has been helpful. But anyway, with this particular recipe, I'm gonna use sourdough discard and yeah. I've been in deep mama conversation in here so I can catch up on what I'm doing. But I had measuring spoons. Okay, they're over here. So I'm times seven, times seven, Lisa's recipe for sourdough zucchini bread. And for instance, in one loaf, it's two teaspoons. We can do this, two teaspoons of cinnamon. But I am doing it times seven. So. 14 teaspoons is a little over four and a half tablespoons. Okay, so when you see me dumping tablespoons of cinnamon in here, this is why, okay, okay.
So I'm now mixing up the Mega Mama style dry ingredients. And then we need to get our butter melted in the, um, I'm gonna set in the refrigerator in the microwave. And mix our wet ingredients and combined. And then we will divide this between our precious little loaf pans and then our muffin pans. So if you're not looking, or if you don't need, or if you don't want, or if you're not into sourdough season, I'll also link my various zucchini bread recipes from largefamilytable.com also in the description below too. And yes, we had some butter in the freezer downstairs, so I am putting this in my bowls and putting it through the microwave to soften it. Also, friends, don't forget if you are a mama who has been interested in starting and growing a successful YouTube channel, I now am wearing the hat of YouTube mama mentor and mompreneur mentor, and I would love to help you on your journey. Right now through July 31st, you can sign up for my brand new YouTuber Extraordinaire course that's part of my successful Business Mama course suite for a special early bird discounted price where you get an additional $30 off. That $30 off is reflected on the price whenever you go to largefamilytable.com forward slash YouTube. That price that you see is the discounted price that is good now through July 31st. The sale will continue through August 7th. It will be a higher price though for the last week and then the cart will be closed, the course will no longer be available, and I am starting with my students on August 8th, which is also my 44th birthday. I will also be doing once a week a live once a week group coaching call with all of my students where they can ask me all their YouTube questions and I can help them with brainstorming and planning and channel analysis and all those things that, you know, I love butter as I'm here <laughs> unwrapping all this butter. Well, I love YouTube. I've been on YouTube for nine years. I have learned a lot. I have seen things. I have seen channels come and go. I have seen people have great success. I've seen other businesses developed off of YouTube. It's just, it's a fantastic platform, and that's why I chose for my very first Successful Business Mama course suite class to be on helping mamas with their YouTube hopes and dreams. So click the first link in the description below and head to largefamilytable.com forward slash YouTube to get my super low discounted early bird price for my very first students for this first and only launch week. Okay, I got my my bucket of sugar, but I'm gonna have to squat down here. So it's one and a fourth cups of brown sugar. So we're times seven in that. And so quickly, I think that's, why do I keep saying six and a quarter cups? That's wrong. So it is one and a quarter cup per batch for the nine by five little cutesy loaf. We are doing that times seven, so it's eight and three quarters cups. And I'm using a one and a half cup scoop here. So we've got three cups in. Okay, now we're at six cups. Call that pretty close. That glass sort is not full all the way. I just want no trouble. I'm already, I'm already down an eyeball. I want no trouble in life tonight. <laughs> Alrighty, well, I didn't think, I didn't think we were gonna make mama bowl this, but apparently we are. Because I have my dry ingredients in this bowl, but this little wheezy bowl, that's what Travis would call it, that I'm putting the wet ingredients in. It's not gonna cut it and then by the end, we're gonna need to mix it all together. So Mega Mama Bowl, it is for sure. Okay. Alrighty, so we've got both Mega Mama ovens loaded. Loaded, loaded with our muffins and our breads. Something I just noticed that shows, well, when we got this yogurt batch going was a little over nine hours ago. So we're gonna be out here Still working when it finishes. We started before this 
final batch was going here, but still, just looking at our times. Well, this is how things are working out. Some of the little muffins slid just the way that I had two dozen on each pan. So we did a total of five dozen muffins. Here's our nice two bread loaves. And then here's these little cutie pie loaves there. Aren't those precious? That's our yogurt going off. You can see, even though some are a little squirrely in the pan, they cook beautifully and they're already being gotten into. So I think we're okay. Now for extra fun, we've got beeping going off everywhere. Mama just can't do one more thing. One thing I have learned from Lisa also is that if you have your sourdough prepped, here's all you have to do. It's not like you do and prep all this sourdough and you just absolutely have to bake it that day or that night. You can totally prep your six batches of bagels and then you can have your family, this is what I'm gonna do, put them in the refrigerator. And then tomorrow, after I sleep in, <laughs> I will set them out and we will continue on with our bagels. I also have probably one more batch of one dozen muffins, batter left. I'm gonna have them put that in the fridge. I'm gonna have Travis come out here and help save me <laughs> for tonight. We're doing it though. See you in a few minutes, which will also be tomorrow. Well, good morning, baby friends. <laughs> uh, yeah, so last night I hit a wall and I just walked to the other end of the house with my vitamins and my hot tea and my water, got myself ready for bed. I had tra I texted Travis, he came in and I told him that uh, mama can't move and I could tell things were going downhill even further with my eye. So I gave him a list and him, him and the kids came out here and just finished everything for me. They got all those zucchini muffins and zucchini breads put away. We had a little bit of batter left from that. I believe I shared last night for about a dozen or so more. I had to put that in a container. I had them take our six batches of bagels to a downstairs refrigerator. And I was hopeful that today, that this morning, that I'd be able to, you know, do those bagels and boil them. And those six batches of bagels still need to be made into the bagel shapes, of course. Uh, set out to proof for another hour or so, then boiled, then baked. And if, if I was okay, we would do that. But I think what we're gonna do instead is, just like I'm doing with all the fruit that's prepped, today I'm just gonna have my folks put those batches in freezer bags and throw them in the freezer. Just like I have frozen the sourdough pizza dough and uh, sourdough bread ready to go. Those are just gonna go in the freezer. And so now we have prepped and ready to go in the freezer bushel of peaches, probably a bushel or more of uh, cherries, six batches of bagels, and the blueberries are not in the freezer yet, but that's another thing that I'll instruct that we'll do this morning. So as I do in life situations where things get twisty and twiny and don't go as planned, I sit back and I think, okay, how can I compensate for this situation? And how can I make the very best of this? This is not the worst thing in the world. This is highly inconvenient, <laughs> you know. Definitely was not what was on my calendar here. Because thinking back for June and July, we've had multiple weeks of various odd respiratory things throughout the household. And then besides being caretaker, because that's what mamas do, right? This past week, I've also been yet again down in different ways and dealing with things. So, and now today, Travis and I are leaving for our anniversary trip. That's already paid for. It's been booked for months, already paid for. And in two days, it is our 25th anniversary. And I'm either going to stay home and hold a warm compress on my eye or I'm gonna go to the really nice rental house <laughs> you know and uh, hold a warm compress on my eye so so we're still moving forward with that and we're gonna be gone all week but when we get back we had to have a nice 
family snuggle movie day because I've already had a lot of kids at equestrian camp this past week. So we just, we need some, some uh, we need some all together family days. But the next big mega cooking video that I film will be us getting all of those things out of the freezer and working on still getting those preserved. So if life doesn't go your way, remember the freezers yet again save us. Not only can we have meals prep ready to go, if you're in the middle of a bunch of preps and stuff happens, you can throw it all in the freezer and come back to it later. That's what we're gonna walk out here. Another blessing is we do have a family doctor that I could just text on a Sunday morning. I'm gonna text some pictures of my eye this morning and if I need anything else for this eye, I know he'll be able to take care of it today. So it's a real blessing. I'm telling you that because I don't want y'all to worry about me because I know you care about me and uh, all the adventures I have going on. So what did we do, mega friends? <laughs> we filled 10 by, we filled four, 10 by 15 glass baking dishes with the red lids with homemade organic buckwheat pancakes. We prepped five dozen of those chocolate chip sweet muffins, AKA sourdough zucchini muffins, and then six of those cute little mini loaves, and then two great big loaves. We did prep and get proofing those six batches of bagels. And we did all of that with one eye tied behind our back. So, we still did a lot. Thank you for watching. I'll see you real soon with another brand new video. Bye bye. But wait, there's more. The two gallons of yogurt. I had them last night just take those in our pots, put them in a refrigerator. See, this is where all my refrigerators save me time and time again. And this morning I'll give directions to get those straining and so they'll at least have some yogurt to start their week. They'll at least have a bunch of Greek yogurt. They'll have all those wonderful chocolate sweet muffins. They're loaded up on pancakes. And then I believe in this upstairs refrigerator, we have two loaves of sourdough that are sliced down in the freezer meal freezer. We also have three other loaves that are frozen. And this week while I'm gone, I'm just, I'm going to leave directions on the 16 personal <coughs> And, and so from the freezer meal dinner for meals, they can have meatloaf, they can have meatloaf with sides one night, they can have a lasagna with sides another night out of the five nights, going six days, five nights, out of the five nights, they can pick whatever they want, two nights, they could do the personal sourdough pizzas. And then I know we have spaghetti sauce and some other options in the freezer they can do for the fifth night. So the big thing I always think about is dinners. I know breakfast between the prep to head pancakes and eggs and oatmeal, they're good for breakfast. And then we do have other fresh fruit and vegetables available. I'm also having them, so I thought of other things to tell you, I'm having them do on, on this week. Um, as the tomatoes ripen and are ready, I won't be able to deal with those this week. So I'm having them pull tomatoes and then, you know, wash them. And once they get a gallon bag full, to just throw those in the freezer. So coming up, we also have the 50 pounds of tomatoes from last winter, and then we have our beginning stash of tomatoes from this summer. So just need to get my other eyeball <laughs> working again here, and lots of fun, massive food preservation coming up.